we're talking about the visible sharpness of an image. We've been talking a lot about contrast and, and density. Now let's talk about the sharpness or the detail of an image. <coughs> when we're talking about visible of sharp, visibility of sharpness, we're also talking about definition, detail, resolution, sharpness, visibility of detail, edge gradient. These all mean the same thing. And there's umbra. They all mean the same thing. What is the opposite of detail? Blur. Loss of detail. Loss of resolution. Loss of definition. Okay, those are the opposites. So, an opposite of that is called penumbra or blur. Opposite of detail is known as penumbra or blur. Okay, but we also refer to it as loss of detail or loss of resolution. Okay, they all mean the same thing, all right? You got two examples here. This is great detail. This is loss of detail, or what is this called? Penumbra. Blur or penumbra. penumbra. Okay. So let's talk about two specific terms about resolution and detail. Resolution is the ability to image two separate objects and visually distinguish one from another. The first one here is spatial or spatial, whatever you want to say, spatial resolution. And this is to the ability to delineate or differentiate objects that are not very similar. They are not very similar. Okay. So the ability to distinguish between two separate objects of high contrast, such as bone and soft tissue, they're not very similar. Bone, soft tissue, spatial contrast. Okay. Two different objects. The next one here, well, if these are two different objects, then the next one here is delineating structures that are very similar. This is your contrast resolution. The ability to distinguish anatomical structures that are very similar. Very similar. Kidneys, stomach, small bowel, spleen, liver, gallbladder, aorta, vena cava, muscle, ligaments. Okay. Now let's break this down a little bit more in describing contrast resolution. If you have increased contrast resolution, increased contrast resolution, that means that there are more shades of grays. Don't get this confused with high contrast. radiographic contrast. Because radiographic contrast, when we say high contrast, we're saying it's black and white, right? When we're talking about contrast resolution, if you have high contrast resolution, that means there are more shades of grays. We are able to delineate the very similar structures. Okay. So think opposite now. Just got tricky. Yeah. <laughs> decreased contrast resolution. Decreased contrast resolution is less sh shades of gray. Now it's making it more difficult to delineate the similar structures. So if you've got similar structures, you want a lot of grays, right? If you have a lot of similar structures, you want a lot of grays to delineate one structure from the next. If I don't have a lot of grays, this is what I have. Now it's going to be more problematic in delineating those similar structures. Low contrast resolution. Camera, look at something for a little bit. <laughs> All right, factors that affect the image quality. We're going to be talking about noise. We already know about uh, speed. And these are the other ones I'm going to introduce to you. Magnification, distortion, focal spot blur, and other types of subject factors. First one here is noise. Noise is a random fluctuation in the density random fluctuation in the density, it generally has a grainy appearance on a radiograph, like here on the next image, okay? It has a grainy appearance. 
that's noise. Noise can be produced in three, uh, three ways. The first one here is film graininess. What are you going to find in the film emulsion? What is the active ingredient in the film emulsion? The silver halide. The silver halide crystals. When the film is manufactured, those silver halide crystals should have been spread out evenly on the film's base. However, if they're not spread out evenly and there's a clumpiness of it, okay, they're concentrated in more area, you're going to get film noise or film graininess. Okay? Let's talk about the intensifying screen. What is the active ingredient in the intensifying screens? They're also crystals, the, right? The your phosphors. phosphors. Remember your phosphors? The phosphors in the intensifying screen converts the x-rays into light. light. So if those phosphors aren't spread out evenly as well, and they're clumping up in different areas of that intensifying screen, you're going to get structural modeling or structural graininess. All right, so what is film? The other one is intensifying screen. The last one here has to do with your technical factors. Your technical factors. So before you read on to this, I'm just going to go ahead and just give you an example or show you an example of what quantum model is. It is basically, it happens when you have short exposures. Very short exposure time. Very, very quick. Okay? You guys ready? If you have a very short exposure time, you guys ready? If you have a short exposure time, are you able to tell me what your partner is next to you is wearing? The color of their eyes, maybe the length of their hair, the color of their shoes? The light was on pretty quick, right? Now, if I were to have a longer exposure time, now you can tell me a better description of your neighbors, right? Modeling happens with very short exposure times. You don't get a lot of detail. When you don't get a lot of detail, this is where the graininess comes in. All right? The sample that I gave you guys up here on the slide was referring to the showering of the x-ray beam. Film has been exposed to an uneven shower of light photons as well as x-ray photons which is due to the fact that x-ray beam itself is uneven. So when we're talking about showering, your sidewalk broken up in two, in two separate blocks. If it rained for a very short period of time, the sprinkles of the water is only going to create dots on each of those slabs. Okay, So that slab is going to be dotted. Short exposure time. If it rained for a longer period of time, that slab of concrete is now going to be completely what? Wet. Completely wet, more density, less spottiness. Okay? So the showering effect happens with shorter exposure times where you're going to result in an image that looks spotty and green. That's quantum modeling. Quantum modeling. Okay, any questions? All right. What do we know about speed? It doesn't matter if we're talking about film or intensifying screens. If anything is too fast, what happens to detail? You lose detail. You lose detail. So if you're losing detail, that also means you have an increase in what? Noise. Noise. Increase in speed, increase noise. What happens to quality? It goes it down. It goes down. We already know about this, so I'm not going to spend any time on this at all. Okay? It's on film and intensifying screen. We know that. Fast is good for patient, but bad for detail. All right, let's talk about geometric factor. Geometric factors refer to the recorded detail of the image and the accuracy which the true edges of the anatomy may be seen. We're going to be talking about magnification, and we're going to be talking about shape distortion. We'll talk about blur here in just a moment. Magnification is a misrepresentation of the true size of the anatomy being radiographed. 
It's a misrepresentation of the size, the true size of the anatomy being radiographed. The influencing factors of magnification relates to distance. The first one is SID. What's SID? Source to image distance. Source to image distance. The other distances that we're going to be referring to in how it influences magnification is SOD, which is your source to object distance, and then your OID. We say OID, which is OID, your object to image distance. Source is your x ray tube, image is your image, image receptor, okay? And the object is going to be the patient, the patient or the object being x rayed. That's your object. Okay? Any variation, uh, variation or changes in this distances will result in magnification. What's magnification? Look at my hand. Look at the shadow. What's happening in the shadow of my hand? It's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. That's magnification. Our body is three-dimensional. We take x-rays of our body all the time, but because we are three-dimensional, we can't get the object as close to the image receptor as possible. This is no magnification, okay? This is magnification, where the true size of the anatomy being radiographed is distorted. It's a lot larger than the original magnification, okay? We are three-dimensional. So the best part to decrease magnification is to get the body part as close to the image receptor as possible. You guys are following? Where's my heart? In my chest. Can I get my chest up on the board? Can I get my heart on the board? Because we want to get as close as possible to the image receptor with no magnification. So what I'm telling you here is, no matter how I take an x-ray of my heart, it's always going to be magnified. And this is something that we need to know and the doctors need to know so that we can account for those variations in the, or in the um, location of your, your structures. Okay? Very, very rare that we get zero magnification on our images. There's always going to be some degree of magnification. Okay? But we can control that by varying what? Changing the distances. Varying our distances. We can control that. Okay? So again, here's your example here. You got SID, SOD, and OID. Your source to image distance is from your x-ray tube to your image receptor. It can be film. It can be your, what's the other one we talked about? PSP. PSP. So it can be your film or your PSP. Source to object is from the x-ray tube to the part being x-rayed. OID is the part being x-rayed to the distance of your image receptor. If I were to give you two factors, would you be able to give, tell me what the third factor is? For example, if I told you this was 72 inches and this was 36, can you tell me what your SOD is going to be? What is it going to be? 36, 36 right? Because SOD plus void equals SID. If I gave you that and I gave you that, you should be able to determine that. If you got this and that, you should be able to determine that. If you got this and that, you should be able to get that, right? Okay. There's a reason of why I'm bringing this up. All right. So let's, be talk, let's talk about the law of magnification. Again, we're trying to determine the true size of the object being x-rayed. We already know the true size of the object being x-rayed, but we need to determine the projected image or the magnification caused by those variances and distances. All right. The simple formula is image size over object size is equal to SID over SOD. When broken down from the original formula, we can both determine the amount that the object got magnified and then the percentage of the object being magnified. Okay? This is going to make more sense as we progress. So here's an example. <coughs> An object measures eight inches in diameter. Here is my object. It's eight inches. So let's just say we're talking about my hand. The diameter of my hand is eight inches. And the OID, the distance from my hand to the image receptor is going to be five inches. 
which means that my hand is going to be five inches away from the image receptor. See how my hand is already getting larger, the shadow of it? Okay. We need to determine what the projected image size is going to be. But the projected image uh, size is the shadow of my hand. Okay. So it's five inches above the image receptor and the SID is 40 inches. What is the magnification factor of the image? What we're talking about here is the projected image. This is your projected image. What is the mag uh, magnification factor of the projected image? This is your projected image, the shadow of my hand. Okay. Simple formula, SID over SOD. SID is 40 inches. What's SOD? Is it up here? Okay, how did we get, okay, we got void, right? So we minus void five. Minus. So what do we say? 40 minus five is gonna give us SOD. Let's plug that in. Sit over SOD, 40 divided by three, uh, 35 is 1.14, okay? That's my magnification factor. All it's telling me is by how much, by how much did my hand grow from the original size, okay? Here's my original size, eight inches, but I'm five inches away, so I want to know what size this is now, my projected image, the shadow of my hand, okay? So it grew by one size, which is the one, and 0.14. I am gonna take 1.14 and multiply it by the eight inches, and that will give me the projected image size, okay, which is now 9.12. Is this making sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, 9.12 is my projected image size. Okay. So you, what you have to do is you gotta find your magnification factor. That's just giving you the factor. If I'm asking you what is the size of the projected image, you have to multiply the factor with the original size of the object. Do not forget that step. All you're determining here is the factor. If I'm asking the size, you've got to take the factor and multiply it by the original size. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I want to determine the percentage of magnification from the original size of my hand, the percentage of magnification this is the formula that we're going to use. Image size minus object size divided by object size times 100. I'm laughing because there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I hate math. Okay, and I know you guys do too. All right, so we already got the, uh, these numbers from a previous page. Um, object size is eight inch. Image size is 9.12. Where did we get 9.12? By adding. Right here. 9.12, okay? Okay, so image size, 9.12 minus the original size of eight, divided by the original size of eight, times 100, okay? Okay, everybody name that? Okay. So once I got 1.12 divided by eight, it's gonna, and times 100 is gonna give me 0.14 times 100 will give me the percentage, 14%. That is the percentage of growth of the object when it's five inches away from my image receptor, okay? It grew by 14%. You guys wanna know an easier way of doing this? You guys ready? It's magic. 14%. You can do it by simply just doing SID over SOD. Okay, it grew by 14%, point 14. You guys see that? I just skipped all this. 14%, it's already there, it's for you. In other words, this magnification factor and the percentage can't be 
less than one. Here is one, the true size of the object. Magnification is greater than the size of the original object, which is one. It can't be any smaller than that. It has to be greater than one. Okay, any questions? So basically, what we're talking about here is changes in distance. Changes in distance. All right. To minimize magnification, these are all the ways to minimize magnification. Trying to get as true to size as possible. We're trying to decrease magnification. The first way is to increase your source to image distance. Increase your source to image distance. What distance is that? When I'm saying source to image, what are the two things we're talking about here? X-ray tube. Your X-ray tube from the receptor. image receptor. Okay. Nick, can I borrow you? Sure. <laughs> Flashlight, the flashlight is the x ray tube. Just stand right here for me, right here. Check that. Okay? Can you guys see over there? Okay. Here's my hand. We're looking at the shadow of my hand, okay? What happens when you increase your SID? So let's go ahead and pull a tube away. What is going to happen? Here, bring it back a little bit. Okay, stand back right there. Okay, I'm going to be more obvious. Okay, here's my hand. Go ahead and bring the tube back. Keep going. Go, 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 go. What's happening to the size of my hand? Keep going. It's getting smaller. It's getting smaller. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Okay. So the further that you bring your tube away, the less magnification you have. Bring it closer. What does magnification do to detail? Look at the edges of my hand. It decreases detail. It decreases detail. So now my hand is getting bigger, right? Everybody agree? And look at the detail of the edges of my hand. It's blurry. It's blurry. So magnification, good or bad? It's bad. It's bad. Okay, so anytime you, don't leave. Anytime you have magnification, anytime you have magnification, you lose detail. So I can decrease magnification by number one, bringing that further away, increasing your SID. Number two, if, I, if the tube stays the same, what I can do here, and this is the same thing, is increase my source to object distance. This is the same thing. The distance from the object to my source is the same thing. I am increasing the distance between my hand and the source. It's the same thing. As it gets closer, it gets less detail. Right, in better detail. Oh, as closer, the closer I get? Yeah. yeah, so the closer my object is to the source, the more magnification and less detail that I have. Okay? And then lastly, your OID. The closer the object is to my image receptor, no magnification, better detail. Okay? Thank you. So this is what I want you guys to do when you get home. Okay, two further away, no mag, better detail. Source to object, the further my hand was from the x-ray tube, less mag, better detail. And then lastly, my hand right on the image receptor, decrease the OID, less mag, better detail. So what I want you guys to do is go home. These are just synonymous terms, you guys can look at that on your own. Go home. Grab a flashlight. Turn off all the lights. Grab your significant other. Put on some candlelight. <laughs> Put on Pandora. You guys are ready to go. Do this. This is going to be fun. Okay. Do the same thing that Nick and I were doing. Uh, you know, changing the distance of your flashlight, changing the distance of your hand or object. I mean, you can do it. You know, grabbing like a, a pen and doing the same thing.
okay? Different types of object and notice the changes in magnification and detail. Okay, so do that. All right, let's talk about shape distortion. Shape distortion, we're not talking about the size, we're talking about a misrepresentation of the true shape, not the size, but the shape of the object being x-rayed. Again, we're talking about our, our body, we're in three dimensions. We're not two dimensional where everything is flat. All our anatomy lies in different angles and different positions within our structure. And this is why when you guys get into the radiology program, we'll be teaching you how to position the patient the right way to get the body part flat and parallel with the image receptor. We don't take all our x-rays like this. This is just ridiculous. We do our patients in different positions, okay, <laughs> to get the body part flat, okay? If you can't get the body part flat, this is what you end up getting is shape distortion. Shape distortion happens when there is a misalignment or an angle in your x-ray tube. You guys following? In your x-ray tube, the image receptor or the body part you will get shape distortion and angulation of your x-ray tube, your image receptor, or the body part. It will result in either elongation or foreshortening. Here is elongation. Elongation occurs when there is a change in your tube alignment. Instead of it being straight up and down, the tube is coming in a different angle, causing elongation of the object being x-rayed. This can also happen if your imaging plate, image receptor, is also in an angle, it results in elongation. Results in elongation. Okay. Look at my pen, what's happening to my pen? Stretched out. Look how long that is. There's the true size. I can even foreshorten it. And I can elongate it, okay? So foreshortening occurs when there is an inclination of an object. This is called foreshortening. So you get elongation with tube or image receptor angulation. You get foreshortening when there is angulation of the body part. Okay, Elongation with tube or image receptor. Foreshortening with angulation with the body part. Okay, again, turn off the lights, get some wine. <laughs> Keeps getting better and better, right? Guys? <laughs> All right, any questions on shape or size distortion? Macro radiography, all macro radiography is is magnification radiography. There are times when we purposely blow up the image. We make the image larger. But what do we know about making something larger? What's going to happen to our image? It's going to ignore distortion. We're going to lose detail. Okay? But we want to blow it up. So to compensate for that loss of detail, what you want to do is you want to use the smallest what? The smallest focal spot size possible to give you that loss of detail. Again, we do macro radiography for mammography and angiograms. We like to blow up the vessels or blow up the, the breast tissue. But anytime you magnify something, you lose detail. So we're going to compensate that with using the smallest focal spot possible. If I was using anything 0.3 or less, what is the tube called? Microfocus. It's a microfocus tube. Okay. There's another term up here too, it's also known as fractional. Fractional is small. So fractional or microfocus tube. All right, I'm not gonna spend any more time on that. Okay. I've killed it. Focal spot size, that's focal spot blur. The larger the focal spot size, the more blur that you get. Focal spot size does not affect magnification. What affects magnification? What are they? I hear it. SOD and 
distances. Yeah, any changes in your distances is going to affect magnification. It has, so focal spot has nothing to do with it. Okay, focal spot evaluation. How is resolution measured, guys? Line pairs per millimeter. Line pairs per, per millimeter using a resolution test tool. Remember that? I'm not going to spend any more time on that, but we talked about contrast, we talked about density, we're now talking about detail. Detail is measured in line pairs per millimeter. Your focal spot sizes are either quoted by your manufacturer, so they'll tell you exactly what you're getting. To verify that, we can run our own tests. We can run our own tests by using what's known as a pinhole camera. The pinhole camera is what measures the effective dimensions of the focal spot sizes your filaments, okay? So we can do that by using a pinhole camera. It looks like this. This is a pinhole camera. 